Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Pius X Church for the celebration of Mass for the 28th Sunday of Ordinary Time. As we prepare for Mass, please join me in praying the St. Michael the Archangel prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of Heavenly Hosts, Lord our God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, prowl about the world, speaking the ruins of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you are visiting, we thank you for coming and joining us. Come again anytime. Please remember to silence your felt and stand and greet your neighbor. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your word, help us know, God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story till we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known. Turn our worship into witness in the sacrament of In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries as we acknowledge our sins and we seek God's mercy. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Receive. 
grace, O Lord, we pray at all times, go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her. Nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold in view of her is a little sand and before her silver is to be accounted mere. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom Return, O oh Lord, how long have pity on your servants. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will sing for joy. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Make us glad for the days when you afflicted us, for the years when we saw evil. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we shall sing for joy. Let your works be seen by your servants and the glory by their children. May the gracious care of the Lord our God be ours. Prosper the work of our hands for us. Prosper the work of our hands. Fill us with your love, O Lord. And we will sing for joy. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. 
Brothers and sisters, indeed the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflection and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at these words. So Jesus said again to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who has rich, who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said to among themselves, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, we have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age homes and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ wiped away. So in today's gospel, we have the, I think, pretty familiar story of the rich young man who came to Jesus. And he was pretty excited to see Jesus. The gospel tells us that he ran up to Jesus, and he knelt before him, and he asked him, how do I get eternal life? I want eternal life. He knew he was missing something in life. And Jesus said, well, you know, you got to keep the commandments. And the, old, the young man could have left it at that. He could have just said, yeah, I, I, I guess I'm pretty good. But the other gospel tells us that in order to justify himself, he asked Jesus again the question. I've kept all these since my youth. And Jesus looked at him with love. 
And he says, you're lacking one thing. Go sell what you have, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. I don't know about you, but it makes me cringe a little bit whenever I hear that. It makes me cringe on probably two levels. The first level is, it's a sad story. Here's a man who really seems to be seeking eternal life. He wants to do the right thing. And for some reason, there's an obstacle. There's an impediment that's keeping him from gaining eternal life. So that's the first reason I cringe, because it's a sad story. The second reason I cringe is maybe I have to look at myself and say, am I holding on to something that is keeping me from the kingdom of God? Are my material possessions more important than my relationship with God? So it's important to understand that and to ask ourselves that question. But you see, Jesus doesn't have anything against wealth. <laughs> he doesn't have anything against wealth. Wealth in itself is not wrong. Wealth is amoral. Wealth is amoral, meaning it's not moral or immoral. It's, it's just a thing. What we do with our wealth can make it moral or immoral. But in itself, wealth is not evil. It's not bad. But it's what happens to that. And so Jesus uses this little metaphor, and he talks about the camel going through the eye of a needle. So the metaphor is, right, in, in, in Jerusalem there's this gate, and they have this eye, which is a really small gate that you have to go through. And in order to go through, if you had a camel, you had to unpack the camel, take all the things off, all your stuff off the camel, and allow the camel then to get on his knees and go through. Had to be unpacked. What are some of the things in our life that we probably need to unpack? What are the things that we hanging on to before we get into the kingdom of heaven? And the apostles are just astonished at this. They just are besides themselves. They're saying, well, well, well then who can be saved? You know, if you do all this stuff, if you keep all the commandments, if it's really hard to get through that eye of a needle to get into eternal life, how, who can be saved? You see, they were thinking that you can save yourself. <laughs> I'm doing all these things so I can save myself. And Jesus says, no. <laughs> for human beings, it's impossible. You can't save yourself. But for God, all things are possible. You see, only God can save us. He can give us the grace to come to terms with some of the material things that we have. So what is it in your life? Maybe it's material possessions. Maybe it's your boat. I don't have one, so it can't be my boat. Maybe it's my car. Maybe it's my money, my 401k. Maybe it's my status. Maybe it's my pride. Maybe it's my control. What are some of the things that we need to unpack? What are the things that we're clinging to in this life that we really need to take off the camel before we can enter into the kingdom of God? See, a couple years ago, Father Jones came, and he was right here, and he said something in the middle of his homily that struck me to the core. And maybe you remember it. He said, you know what? Your life is not about you. Your life is not about you. Every Tuesday night when we do the uh, prayers to Our Lady of Perpetual Help, we ask our mother, to, our, our Blessed Mother, to say, you know, let us remember that our lives belong to others as much as, do you remember, they belong to us. You see, our life is not our own. And it's a great motto for living a Christian stewardship way of life. Our, lot, our life is not ours. Our life is a gift from God. Maybe sometimes we have to look at the gifts that God is giving us and how am I returning? What am I returning to him? Pope St. Uh, Paul II, the sixth, hey, Pope St. Paul VI. He was the Pope back in uh, 63 to 78, back in the old 1900s, you would say. I kind of remember Pope John, Pope, yeah, I know, Pope Paul VI. Anybody else remember Pope Paul VI? Yeah, we kind of do, don't we? Yeah, we've given away our age. He said something, and it's very interesting, because, again, he was pope since 1963 to 1978. 
He said something very interesting. He said, modern folk, 60 years ago, modern folk, right? Modern folk listen more carefully to witness than to teachers. So in other words, when people give a witness, it means more to modern people. I think we're modern folk. <laughs> we listen more readily to a witness than we do to teachers. So to that light, this is Stewardship Weekend, we have asked a young couple to come and speak to us about their stewardship way of life, how they have embraced that, what it means to them, how they have tried to live the stewardship way of life, and in their unique situation, what it means to them, and what it has done for them to their relationship with God. Very interesting. And the other thing is that I hope they share with us the peace and the purpose that living for God brings to their lives. So I'm going to ask Bethany and Brandon Kelly to come up. Grandma and Grandpa are going to watch the kids. Bobby, I'm glad I didn't wear that same shirt today. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Bethany Kelly, and this is my husband, Brandon. So many of you probably know me, but I grew up here in St. Pius Parish, went to St. Pius School. Bethany converted to our faith back in high school, and we married in this church. And uh, been gone for a while, but back in the last few years, and now we have three young boys going to school at St. Pius School and the ECC. And you may be looking at us thinking, isn't that the family that has to take at least one of their kids to the back of church almost every weekend? We all know what happens in the back of church. <laughs> we wanted to share with you a little bit about our journey of stewardship and what stewardship means to us. As we grew into our adult young lives, we attended mass most weekends, prayed together daily, but we felt that God was calling us to do more. While having young kids and attending St. Francis Xavier Parish in St. Joseph, Missouri, some close friends of ours modeled the way to live out, a, live out your faith as a young family. It was then that we realized that our faith in God needed to not just be something that was around, but needed to be the center of our lives. We had always wanted to raise our boys to have a relationship with God and to be a part of the, the Catholic community, but we were not modeling the stewardship way for them. The catalyst for us was making it a point to say, no matter what, we would attend Mass every weekend, whether on vacation, traveling to attend seemingly infinite non-Catholic weddings in a barn, or having a, day, <laughs> or having a day full of kids' sports, working around the house. We find time to worship God in Mass. Our kids now get excited to travel to other ta towns and attend um, Mass at different parishes. And we know it's a challenge to bring young kids to Mass, and we know we're always going to annoy the person behind us every single time. Sorry, Margaret. <laughs> but we knew that this was where we wanted to be, and there was no more important place to be with our kids every weekend than in Mass. And so that was, like Bethany said, the catalyst for our growth and stewardship. But within time, and spending our time with God, we've grown in the last few years as well. One of those ways is we pray every single night as a family. So whether that's we have non-Catholic friends over, we ask them to join in if they want, um, or if they don't decide, that's fine. We, um, even if one of us is out of town like Bethany was this last week, if she needs to leave dinner from uh, an event from work and FaceTime us to pray, we'll still do that. We'll, we'll dedicate ourselves that way. Um, another way personally that I've grown in my stewardship with time with God is uh, I've been listening to a Bible in a Year podcast every morning on the way to work. So it's been very fulfilling to hear the scriptures every morning and then a reflection on that and starting the day off that way. We are deeply grateful for the blessings God has bestowed upon our family, and we strive to use them for his purposes. A good way that we found to get started was by being involved in mass through being door greeters and Eucharistic ministers. We have also involved the kids in this, and Luke and Owen enthusiastically compete with each other to see who can open the door the fastest for the next person. Even Eli, our 10-year-old, has grown from reluctantly helping to altar serve 
to now asking if there are open sub requests so he can happily jump in and help. As for talent, we have a growing desire to continue, to continue the strong traditions of this parish and have used our skills and hobbies to help where we can. Brandon joined the Fix-It crew, helping when he's available. I have assisted with the kids' school's activity, and we both serve on committees benefiting the school and the church. And although we both work very busy jobs and have three kids in sports and activities, we are making an effort to use the talents God has given us for his good. And then as far as treasure goes, money, a lot of people say that's the leading cause of marital issues in divorce in this country. <clears throat> So Bethany and I started our relationship, we wanted to get off on the right foot, and we made the decision that really our money is God's money. And if we start there, we're heading in the right direction. So we really want to be stewards of God's things and money being one of them. And so before we buy groceries, spend money on bills, buy the infinite amount of replacement Nerf ball footballs for these boys that seem to continually be lost, we set aside our tithing and charity money. And as our income increases, we change that and increase as well. It's been something that's been very rewarding for us and something that we wanted to make sure we consistently did. We tithe and give to charities to help serve God's purpose. But selfishly, along with volunteering, it is one of the most fulfilling things we have done, knowing that our work and money help sustain this Catholic community, assist people in need, and spreading the word of God and his love is very rewarding. So we want to leave you guys with the why. why. Why do we choose that stewardship life and why are we continuing to grow down this journey? It really comes down to, to two things here. Is we feel abundantly blessed by God with the gifts that he's given us from the time-wise being here on earth at this period. Uh, the talents and our abilities we have and then translating that into the ability to make money. And so we really feel like we are stewards of these gifts God's given us, and they're really his. And so we want to use those as much as we can to spread God's love and Christ's love in this world. The second one is really modeling the way for the kids, is we want them to grow up and be part of this parish and be part of that community and continue to grow in love too. So as you reflect on your blessings, we encourage you to look around our church community and utilize the thoughtfully organized pamphlet that you received, whether by mail, email, or by stopping to talk to Marla Yowell, our stewardship director. Let's keep in mind Matthew 10, verse 8. Without cost, sorry, without cost, you have received, without cost, you are to give. We invite everyone to share your talents through our parish ministries, spend time in prayer with God, and consider making a consistent gift to the offertory. Thank you for your generosity and commitment, and God bless. Thank you. Let us then stand. As together we profess our faith, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. We call upon God with our needs. That the example of Jesus may continue to inspire all the church in humble service of love for God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Spirit of God may work through all elected and appointed officials to create a more just society. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who struggle with disability or physical hardship may have a blessings of God's strength in their daily lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the truth, beauty, and goodness of our faith may always enliven our hearts and our spirits. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the newly baptized, especially Kylie, Cody, and Kelsey Proctor, who will be baptized here after the 11 o'clock Mass. May they always walk in the light of Christ, guided by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a greater conversion of hearts to God, who loves us so much, that in living the stewardship way of life, we may avoid any sense of entitlement in our relationship with God and one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died in the light of Christ may soon see him face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intentions of this Mass, which are for the repose of the soul of Connie Schultz, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, you shower upon us your countless blessings. May our very lives always give you thanks and praise, for we ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, dear. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. Comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, for the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, 
grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Pius X, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Taught by our Savior to call God our Father, we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from you. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your universe, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A couple of uh, announcements. You'll notice that as you leave, there'll be uh, members of the Knights of Columbus. Our local council will be selling uh, Tootsie Rolls for the um, mentally and physically disabled. That's a once a year. We have our Tootsie Roll drive, and so they'll be outside. So please be generous to them. There are more October Word Among Us in the back of the church for those that did not get a copy. As we talked about during the homily, our October is Stewardship Renewal Month, so please bring your commitment cards that you've received in the mail. Bring them next weekend or complete a card online. We thank you very much for that. 
See the flyer in the bulletin for the Community Chili kip Kickoff, which will be on some Saturday, I'm sorry, Saturday, October the 26th. There's also packets and volunteers in the back of church. And always remember to bring a can of corn and beans for the Christos Center. Okay. And uh, this week, you know, we had a good week at uh, the lake at our Priest Institute, and I'll share more information on that at a later time, but uh, cute story. So I, I was there. I think it was the last night that we were there, and, and uh, I missed this call from Bobby Tiemann. And, and then I listened to the message. It's not Bobby. It's Wanda calling me. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, you know, and, and so no, she's gone to the back now. And, and she says, it's very important you call me right away. And all I could think was, oh, what has Bobby done now? <laughs> but, um, but he hasn't done anything. He's just perfectly fine and safe. So, by the way, we do want to offer our congratulations to Jim and Wanda. On this very day, 50 years ago, they got married. And so let's give them a nice congratulations. Sneak him back up to give him a kiss. So I'm going to give you all a special blessing here at the end of Mass. May the Lord Jesus, who graced the marriage at Cana by his presence, bless you and your loved ones. May he, who loved the church to the end, unceasingly pour his love into your hearts. And may the Lord grant that bearing witness to the faith in his resurrection, you may await with joy the blessed hope to come. And may God always bless you and your family. God bless you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Blessed are they who are poor in spirit. They will be Lord. Bless us, O Lord. Make us poor in spirit. Bless us, O Lord. We are the light of the world. May our light shine before all, that they may say the good that we do and give glory to God. Blessed are they who are meek and humble. They shall inherit.